Hey everybody, now we are starting one of my favorite, favorite things of all time. We're starting to solve equations this week. So you're gonna get your uh, notes going by yourself at the top. Would you please title them two one solving one step equations? And then your essential question of the day is what are inverse operations and how do you use them to solve equations? So you get all of this written down. Would you put a page number up in the top? I'm guessing this is going to be about page 10 for you, I think. And put a date up there as well. I'm not going to give you a date because I'll use this video more than once. If at any point in time you have to pause, please do. All right, I'm going on. So the first thing we're going to do today, what is the solution of x plus 13 equals 27? You get to choose. Do you want to write all of these examples down? Some of them, I will say, you have to write this one down. Others, you don't. This one, you might be able to do in your head. If I wasn't, I always put a line down and I look x plus 13. What do I have to do to both sides? You might say, well, the answer is 14. You're right, because I subtract 13 from both sides. And when I do that, look at my x is still left. These cancel out. I've got 14 over here, all is well. The one thing that gets a little bit scary is when you go here, and now this year we're gonna have fractions, we're gonna have positives, negatives, all sorts of stuff. So be very, very careful. All right here I see it's y plus two. So in order to undo plus two, I subtract two from both sides, drop down my y equals, what do I get over here? Negative eight, you're right. So as we go through this stuff, I know that we did last year. So if it's tough for you, make sure to check with me. And that's why we're going to do videos for this chapter so that if it's easy for you, you just go cruising through. If it's not, you get to ask questions and you don't have to worry about the rest of the people getting cranky because you're slowing down the notes. You get to do it at your own pace. Second set. Again, if you want to write them down, do. Um, otherwise, let's just look through them together. What is the solution of negative seven equals b minus three? Draw my line down, here's my b, I found it, I wanna get that by itself, how do I undo minus three? I add three, yes. Now, again, be careful. I drop my b down, all is well over here, negative seven plus three, so a loss of seven, a gain of three. Be really careful, you're at a loss of four. What is the solution of the equation m minus 8 equals negative 14? How do you undo minus 8? You got it. You add 8. Add 8 all as well. Drop down your m. And you've got negative 6. I put a box around all my answers just so I can find them later. And I highly recommend that for you too. Now, as you're looking here, this one, the b was on the right. This one, the m was on the left. Does it matter? It does not, so don't worry about it. If it totally freaks you out, you can flip it so it's the other way, um, so that this, you could have just switched it so you had b minus three equals negative seven, but really, don't waste your time. It doesn't matter which side the variable is on. All right, now this part, some of these things you have to, have to, have to have written down in your notes. This right here is what they gave me in the book, and we're not going to write all that down. What we do need to know is um, three things right here. If I read through up here, it says the addition property of equality. That's going to be important. We're going to get that into our notes. And it says adding the same number to each side of an equation produces an equivalent equation. Well, let's start then with the word equivalent equation. What in the world is that? So would you please write down equivalent equations? That must be in your notes. And then let's think about it. Equivalent, what does that mean? Yeah, it's just two equations that are equal to each other. So equations that even though they look different, they have the same solution. You can write exactly my words, or you could say they're two equations that are equal to each other. Anything that means this is good. Next one, addition property of equality. If you're thinking, Beaver, you're talking too fast. Push, pause, it's all right. So addition, a property of equality. Let's look up here. It says this, for a 
equals b. Okay, I'm going to grab my highlighter. If for any real numbers a, b, and c, if a equals b, then a plus c equals b plus c. What in the world is that? Really, all that means is if you add something to one side, so in here, you look, they do, they add minus 3. We write it up and down, but really, if you add something to one side, you also have to add it to the other side. So, something that we look back, if I went back to this slide, if I add it to this, if I add it here, then I have to add it to both sides. That's what that property means. So then, if we've got that, well, what about the subtraction property of equality? Yes, you have to write that one down. Now, if addition means if you add something to one side, you must add it to the other, then subtraction property says if you subtract something from one side, you must subtract it from the other, so it's an equivalent equation. So make sure these vocabulary words right here, you get those written down. Okay, I'm going on. If you need to pause, pause. Not a big deal. All right, we've got two more um, vocab words that we need. Isolate. We're going to isolate variables a lot in this chapter, in algebra in general. So what does that mean to isolate? If you are isolated, it really just means to get a variable by itself. If you're isolated, you are alone. So write that one down. And then the last one, inverse operations. For that one, we're going to make a nice little table. So here is my table, and this is what inverse operations are. So as you write do on one side, undo on the other. If you've been with us at Zimmerman for several years, you know this vocab already or this terminology. Um, if you haven't been, that's okay. You'll pick it up real quick. So if I see that they're doing addition, the inverse of that, how would I undo it? Would be subtraction. If I'm minusing, that's my do, to undo that, or the inverse operation is plus. How about if I'm multiplying? Inverse is divide. And if it's division, my inverse is multiply. One more thing that we will get to later on the year. What if you have x squared? How do you undo that? To undo squared, you square root. We'll get to that later, but put it down now. It's good to have it in your brain. All right, so now that we've got all those things down, what is the solution of 4x equals 6.4? Again, write it down or not. This part is okay, but the last two slides, everything written down. How do you undo 4 times x? How do I know that's times? Because a number right next to a letter means times. So I would divide both sides by 4. And when I do that, I get x equals 1.6. Then I box my answer so I can find it. If you're like, what? Just stop, go back, look at it. And if you need some help from there, make sure you ask about it. This one. 10 equals 15x. And you say, I can't do that. Yes, you can. You get a fraction answer. You're going to get fraction answers all the time now that you are a big kid. So times, I undo it by dividing both sides by 15. Now you say, well, you can't do that. Again, yes, you can. What goes into both 10 and 15? 5 does. So you get 2 thirds. It's OK to get fractions. You should always simplify it. But you can leave it improper unless it's IXL, and then you should always check. How about this one? What's the solution of x over 4? Well, what is this bar doing? It's dividing. How do I undo divide? I times, and I write it up high so I can see it cancel out to 1 right there. So then my x drops down. Negative 9 times 4. Well, 9 times 4 is 36. Positive times a negative, negative. X equals negative 36. How about this one? Does it matter that the R is on the right? No. So I multiply both sides by 3. 19 times 3. I don't know what 19 times 3 is, but I know 20 times 3 is 60 minus 3. So, oh, 
must be 57. So distributive property helps you solve stuff quite often. Let's keep going. Oh, look at, yes, more properties. Multiplication property of equality. This piece must be written down. This has to go into your notes. Well, you know what addition and subtraction are. So multiplication property, it means if you multiply something to one side, you must multiply it to the other side so it's equivalent. This one, division property, you must write it down. What does it mean? If you divide something into one side, you must divide it into the other side so it's an equivalent equation. Again, remember, if I'm ever going too fast, that's the point of a video. I go too fast and you pause and make it last as long as you need it to. All right, here's where the rubber meets the road. What is the solution of 4 fifths m equals 28? This is where the, the snags came in last year. You guys did awesome with those other ones, but this, still put, the, put this down. And so there's two ways to think about it. What's being done? I'm multiplying by 4 fifths. So how do you undo multiply? You divide, right? Yes, and that's what you do here. But when you divide by 4 fifths, what that really means is you keep switch flipped, you times it by 5 fourths. So here's what I like to think of it instead. I'm going to do it in red. Really what's happening, do you see how the 4 is in the top? So it's timesing by 4, and the 5's in the bottom, it's dividing by 5. So could I then, to undo the times 4, divide by 4, so I put that right there, and write it next to instead of on top of, and then to undo the divided by 5, I times. Look at reciprocal, all done. Then times 5 divided by 4. And if you say, I can't do that, yes, you can. 25 times 5 divided by 4. Or look at 28 over 4. I could simplify 28 over 4. 4 goes in there 7 times. So watch, 7 over 1, so 7 times 5 is 35, 1 times 1 is 1. Now if you want to do the 28 times 5 all over 4, you can and simplify it later. Totally cool. If you don't like me simplifying beforehand, I'm not offended. Do it your own way, but know that the answer comes out to be 35. So then try this one. What is the solution to 12 equals 3 fourths x? I want you to pause me, try it on your own, and come back and check. All right, so I times by 4, divide by 3, times by 4, divide by 3. Look at, I can simplify right away. 1 and 4. Or I could do 4 times 12, divided by 3. Either way, I end up with 16. If that makes total sense, awesome. If it doesn't, that's why we're going to use class time to work. One more. Toucans and blue and yellow macaws are both tropical birds. The length of an average toucan is about two-thirds of the length of an average blue and yellow macaw. Toucans are about 24 inches long. What is the length of an average blue and yellow macaw? See what you can do with it. Pause it. Come back to me. All right. I see two-thirds of means times a black and yellow there we go, two cans are about 24 inches long. There we go. What in the world do I do with this two thirds? I flip it, divide it by two, times it by three. 24 times three, divided by two, or I see, ooh, 12 and one. 12 times three, 36, don't forget to label it, inches. All right. That was a lot of stuff that we did right there. Um, make sure that you get all of that in your notes, not every problem, but especially the vocab. And then if you have any questions about it, let us chat.